All right, Cursed. It's Wednesday morning, bright and early. T minus five, I'm reliably informed. Five days left in the campaign. That's that's <laughs> only a this, couple of days until. But yep. at this stage, David, the days become 114 hours long, so it's deceptive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i i have to apologize to you i look like hell and i feel like hell because i was up all night watching uh norm mcdonald video oh. clips oh my god rest in peace norm mcdonald and and uh, neil mcdonald who's a friend of uh lee scott's and mine i don't know if the other two of you know him uh was his brother great guy um feeling for neil um this morning and and uh, Joyce Napier, and uh, but anyway, God, Norm was funny. Fuck, watching these things last night, I got to tell you that I uh, <coughs> I watched him doing a weekend update thing, and he said OJ's book says that OJ would have taken a bullet or stood in front of a train for Nicole, and he says now that's bad luck when the <laughs> one guy that would give anything to save your life kills you. <laughs> <laughs> I love well, everything his, about him. It was his. It was. It was the uh, OJ reporting on the weekend update that uh, they said got him. Uh, got ended up getting him. Uh, getting him fired. I personally, my favorite uh, uh, character was uh, him doing Burt Reynolds on the weekend update uh, with oh, Will Ferrell yeah. doing uh, uh, Alex Trebek. Or, uh, yeah. I won't attempt to uh, um, do the whole thing uh, or any of it because it's so unique. Don't do the great. moth joke. We don't have time for the moth. Not joke. the moth joke, but. It, <laughs> find YouTube and look up the Leslie Kitchener joke. That is a funny, funny joke. <laughs> Very funny. I can't even explain the context of it, but it's funny. Rest in peace, Norm Macdonald. I just loved him. And as you say, to Joyce and to Neil, really condolences. Yeah. Hey, Nick. How are you, man? I'm awake. How are you guys doing? Awake. Good. You're in Burlington, Ontario. Yeah, I'm in a comfort inn. I'm my favorite, my yeah. favorite spot. I think uh -huh. on the entire campaign, king size bed. Oh. Can't complain. Hey. Can't complain. Could have two friends over. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, comfort inn. Thanks for thinking of me. <laughs> Why are you in Burlington? I was in Hamilton yesterday because uh, I was in Kitchener the day before. So I'm I'm slowly moving east, and uh, uh, I was with. Catherine McKenna, uh, her hometown is Hamilton. I emailed her a couple days ago because I'd emailed her a few weeks ago and I said, hey, can we just go to Hamilton? You can tell me about where you're from and why everybody wants to win there because leaders keep going and uh, pretty competitive races. There are a few ridings without incumbents running this time. And uh, and then she replied the other day and she said, yeah, sure. And then I, I found out when we met up that she was in Toronto and so she just drove down the QEW and she was finishing her day in Kitchener Waterloo. She describes herself as a one woman band because she has no staff. She's a minister of a caretaker government. And so she's just sort of crisscrossing Ontario, knocking on doors with candidates. And uh, so we had lunch. And then uh, what do we do? We went to Hamilton Mountain and knocked on the door, knocked on doors with a local liberal candidate. And uh, it was a pretty entertaining time. She also Nick. had a, she was struggling with like a sinus infection. And yet still, there she was, you know, she's like, the energy of Catherine McKenna is, uh, is impressive. When you guys went door to door, did you, when people would knock on the door and they would say, sorry, who are you? But did you say, Alexander Hamilton, my name is Alexander Hamilton. Would you do that? Because I know that joke goes over fucking huge in Hamilton. <laughs> <laughs> Like they love it at the Legion. You got to go back. You got to try it. Uh, you know what? I am sneaking back this morning. Maybe I'll just go. Maybe I'll go sit there and just see how quickly my nose is bleeding. You will never have been so <laughs> popular. Sinus <laughs> infection will be the least of your problems. You'll have sinus <laughs> removal. Yeah. Where's everybody today? Uh, so today, uh, the liberal leader, well, he was in Brampton last night. You probably saw photos and videos of a, a rally in Brampton featuring a Former certain uh, certain former prime minister, so that that was a a a, a really uh, convenient gathering spot because today liberal tours on the on the move. Uh, Brampton being close to the Toronto airport, so it is great back. to be back here in uh, Windsor <laughs> with everybody. 
<laughs> I was waiting. For, I was waiting for that, Scott. If you weren't going to do it, I was going to ask for it. I see Nick Taylor Boswald on the audience. <laughs> he writes a book flag. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing breaks my 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 monotonous recounting of where they're going more than a certain impression. Um, anyway, he's yeah. off to Halifax. <laughs> Uh, Aaron O'Toole is in Quebec, uh, going to a couple of ridings in, uh, in that province. Jagmeet Singh is actually, uh, in, in Windsor and he's driving on the bus back to, uh, the GTA through Hamilton, the place nobody can stop going. And Anime Paul is going to a place that, uh, I was just talking about the other day. She's going to Kitchener. And then she and Mike Morris, the candidate there, they're going to sort of go on, you know, Main Street and down, down a road in Kitchener, then they're going to drive to Toronto and do the same thing there. So Mike Morris is going to lend some of his heat to Anime Paul's downtown <laughs> Toronto campaign. I think that's the plan. <laughs> He's pulling up his green junk and letting it out. <laughs> Woo! Um, she must think the riding's done now, right? She must think that she's won that riding. It's in the bank, and so she can afford to go around and... You know, I think she's just given up. I'm oh come on, you guys! I saw her. I saw her at that event in uh, PEI, and she had a little crowd, and she got to give a speech, and people had signs, Aww. and she looked so happy. She looked oh, so happy, and I was thinking, this is what it's supposed to be like every day if you're the leader of a party, not trudging door to door. You're supposed to have crowds and people to talk to. Yeah, that's you get the green participation, uh, Ruben. You guys, you guys like jump over yourselves to try to make the greens relevant in this uh, this election. I still don't think we should count them out. I think I see a late rally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta get you know, that Mike Morris guy out in DC. Saved, they've saved all their ad money for the end. They're back loaded <laughs> for the yes for did the they, appeal. They've David, saved it for they, the appeal, David. Yeah, did they get that forty thousand dollars they were looking for last week, David? I don't think so. I think they're still close to their target. Um, all right, Nick, you got any more words of wisdom for us? I got nothing. I'm I'm spent. You got nothing. I'm I'm spent. But <laughs> okay. I've got I've I've got Keep one clean. more riding. Keep it clean, I might, buddy. One more riding I might show up in before heading back to Ottawa at the end of this thing. So you might you might see me wake up somewhere else in the GTA. We'll find we'll find out if it happens. The hotel's we'll, not booked. We'll keep our fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. I need all the support I can get. See you guys. You goddamn tease. Okay. <laughs> Should we do a show this weekend? Hmm. So I've I've heard from, like a from, musical maybe. We just got to change it yeah. up a bit then, right? I've heard from friends and family they'd like to see they'd like to hear us at least one day this weekend, which shocks me. People 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 want us, David. Really? Eh? I don't know if there'd be a weekend audience or not. Anyway, we'll talk to the producers and see if we can. Because I, I I I'm just feeling melancholy because it's Wednesday and you know we've only got a few of these shows left. And we're going to miss you. Scott and I are on CTV like for 18 and a half hours yeah. together on uh, uh, over the course of Sunday and uh, they, Monday. They sent us the menu yesterday. Please <laughs> order the menu by whatever, 6 p.m. on, on Sunday. And the menu is like, would you like a Mars bar? And then these incredibly elaborate dinners. It's like, would you like a lamb curry? I'm like, I don't think I want a lamb curry while I'm seated and unable to get up for 18 hours. No. I don't want to get too detailed about it, but I think I'm going to lay off the lamb curry. Okay. Yeah, no, I thought that email was a bit weird too, but. Uh... I'll take an apple. <laughs> well, people will be watching you. I will not be able to be seen on election day. I'm unseeable on election night. I'm on CBC radio. That's fantastic. Well, like Walter I'm Winchell, you'll be reporting from the rooftops. <laughs> <laughs> so. I don't know. I can't hear it clearly. I can't hear it clearly. But I think I can hear the fat lady warming up behind the stage. Okay, mm -hmm. David, enough of this foreplay. Just give it to us. <laughs> Leave the fat ladies to me, David. <laughs> Let's get the fucking numbers. <laughs> Jeez, I really thought of you, Scott. I, I found a <laughs> Norm <Mathal> joke about you. <laughs> <laughs> Just about maybe... Spit my coffee out, literally. <laughs> did you? Did you think of me?
I think the Liberals have had two good nights in a row in Frank's polling in Ontario. Okay, that's a relief to me. So the national numbers, 32-32, Okay, well, which one? The you, six you... is the People's Party? Sorry, seven is the People's Party, six is the Bloc Québécois. All right. Three is the Green Party. That's national. And in Ontario? Ontario is 37 liberal. Oh, yeah. Now we're cooking. 32 conservative. 19 NDP, 4 Green, 8 People's Party. Okay. Got to sustain that. Yep. Get that up a couple more points, and then you can take back 65, 70 seats out of Ontario, right? And then this thing is um, well, in the splits, through the, the hoop. The, and this and the splits, uh, uh, the 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 uh, we've said it. The collapse of the green and the increase of the PPC does nothing but help the help the liberals. Like it's, I know there's a lot of people trying to spin that that uh, uh, the PPC is 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 taking from everyone and and non voters and all that kind of stuff. But seventy five percent, as we said yesterday, David, you said two thirds. Uh, they're they're coming from uh, they're coming from us. You may think this whole perception versus reality construct has run out of steam, but I'm here to tell you it's still got legs, hurly burlyites. Lots of legs. Perception. Caddyshack is a light piece of movie entertainment about the subculture of a golf course whose popularity has grown over time. Reality. Caddyshack is brilliant cinema, a philosophical treatise on finding meaning in life, and probably the funniest script ever committed to film and the only one with a scope broad enough to include references to Gophers, the Dalai Lama, and Fresca. Now, I know that most of you think of our presenting sponsor, TELUS, as a Canadian telco, a carrier, the people that make your smartphone connect like a smartphone. That's not the whole story. The reality is TELUS is a technology company driven by social purpose and thriving globally by investing in digital technology that makes life better. So let's talk about TELUS Ventures. TELUS Ventures is the strategic investment arm of the company. Like the name suggests, a venture capital fund. One of Canada's most active venture capital funds and most successful. Since 2001, they've invested in and provided strategic advice to over 90 companies here in Canada and around the world, seed to pre-IPO, that drive innovation in the most critical sectors, digital health, ag tech, smart cities, the Internet of Things, AI, machine learning, and connected consumer goods and services. Working with a best-in-class network of partners, they nurture and grow each opportunity on a case-by-case -case basis. Common to all of it is a mission to use their financial tools and technological experience to generate positive social impact. Frankly, that's different from their competitors, who make it their priority to spend money on sports franchises and media properties. TELUS would rather focus their investments on technology startups in the health, agriculture, tech, and cybersecurity space to do some good. Go to telus.com to learn more. Are they flailing now? Like, what the fuck is, was O'Toole talking about how his carbon tax policy is optional? He's not uh, scrapping the carbon tax. He's going to give the provinces the option of putting his game show in place instead of the current carbon tax. Yeah, because every every premier is going to like saddle up to that piece of shit and basically say, "Yeah, I'll do this, I'll do that." It's just it's it's another day of him just talking about the carbon tax and people uh, being unhappy about it. It's it's the keeping no sides happy. Uh, if you are a conservative minded voter, uh, you are not happy that the conservatives are doing a carbon tax. And if you actually uh, if you if you're if you're on the other side of things and care about it. Uh, you're like, well, why is this an optional thing? And why would any provinces, uh, uh, if, if, if their province is stuck doing a carbon tax, uh, why are they now going to change, um, change plans midway through to the, to the Amway salesman catalog? So it's, it's, it's just a blah policy. Bing, bing, bingo. Like, uh, you know, the whole point of this personal carbon savings account with, you know, high fees uh it was all supposed to it was all supposed to neutralize this issue and permit you to not talk about it if you were Aaron O'Toole right make it not a point of vulnerability so I thought yesterday was really 
bizarre from the conservatives because it felt to me like they're saying, okay, we got six days left on the calendar. We're going to use this day to try to remove irritants or something with, 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 with provinces. I'm going to write a letter to the go saying, I'm just going to give you like, let's just say any amount of fucking money you want for anything that you want it for. Okay. So can we just make sure that that's it? Right. Well, he already had the go in the bank the other day, but anyway, so he, he says that he's on carbon tax where he, I think he's a, are they reacting to newspaper columnists who are saying, you know, when you actually look under the hood of this thing, it makes no sense. Like, why would you engage in that discussion? So it felt to me like they're blowing a day saying, we're going to try to talk about the things that people have problems with in our platform. We'll fix those. And it made no sense to me. I don't know why they would um, well, be covering one of the themselves in trouble. No here's one of the things that makes no sense to me about their campaign. <clears throat> Am I wrong? Am I wrong about this, or are the Liberals proposing to raise the carbon tax from $40 to $170? You're right. That is their policy, correct? Yes. Why isn't that a fucking issue? Why isn't he talking about that? I haven't heard that once. Because he doesn't campaign. have Jenny. Because if he had Jenny, we would be having dinosaur modern man argument because Jenny would be saying, we're going to play dinosaur and we are happy to play dinosaur. We're going to say, no, we're going to say that's a gigantic tax. And well, I they've decided to take I themselves think, on the sideline, right? I think to call me a dino, I think that would be a little bit wrong, but I was uh, kidding. I'm, I, but you, you wanted a crisp cleavage on it though, right? Is what I'm actually saying, right? They've robbed themselves of the ability to attack Trudeau on that because they've got their own complicated weirdo scheme. Yeah. No, it and, made and it the, more and difficult, but they could still do it. And and the Lego thing seems to have backfired. I spoke to uh, I spoke to friends from Quebec, and uh, uh, they said the the chattering class, the the what, what people are talking about is it's actually been an embarrassment for Lego. Like so, so people feel that uh, Lego has endorsed the Tories uh, with no chance of winning, and it's made him look uh, and it's made him look weak. So so it's it's been a kind of lose lose situation all around uh, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of these weird endorsements and policies and uh, and what have you. And and David, to your point, the conservatives aren't talking about what they actually should be talking about, which is high spending, uh, which is high, programs like the carbon tax. Uh, it's 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 nowhere. It's it's um, it's it's like become kind of net neutral. Inflation uh, continues to uh, to go up your the price of going and buying a, a quart of milk and uh uh, and a loaf of bread is still continuing to go up, and, and there's no one talking about it. Ahead, affordability yes, hasn't system. been an issue. Thank you, Jenny. Heard me? I said, God love the imperial system. Thank you for. Yeah, I milk. know. I was going to say, I said a quart of milk. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get a quart of milk. We're going to get a quart of milk and a pound of carbon, and we're going to see if we can make an election loss. Um, uh, like, but seriously though, like why, why did they spend their day the way they did yesterday? Like, uh, you know, the day before they were on the attack, um, it wasn't six days left, six days. Exactly. Left. Like I, Jesus you know, Christ. you can not like the way, and I criticize the, the manner of Trudeau and all that kind of stuff, but they're in pure grind mode now, right? They are, this guy will be for guns against vaccine passports, anything else you hate. He's for pound, 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 drive it on, you know, lower mainland 401, lower mainland 401 on those issues. And they're going to be like that. They're just going to square their shoulders and push for the next five days. You got to do the same if you're the conservatives. Yeah. And you've, you've had, you've had like, it's, and it's not like you're running against a flawless opponent. Like yesterday, the, the, the main clip that anyone was looking at uh, that was being sent around, at least to, to, to people where his was Trudeau's interview uh, on BCTV, where on Global BC, which we talked about yesterday, but it was a cringe worthy interview. Like it was like, like you watch that. Like I, I watched the clip now probably about five or six times. And every time I watched it, I was like, Ooh, like it was, yeah, it was yeah. one, it was one of those, like if you're sitting there and watching your, if it was your candidate, you would be like, basically like, well, this is really fucking bad. And so there, there, ha there have been moments where you can kind of open the door and, uh, uh, the conservatives are not, uh, the conservatives just aren't doing it. When did they last carry a day? Can anybody remember when you felt the conservatives carried a day? It's been a while. Uh, before, before the uh, consortium debates, or before the, For uh, sure. yeah. For sure. I think you got to go back to the second week of the campaign. Yeah, because you had five days, five, six days prior to the consortium debates where they were mucked up in guns and stuff, right? It's been quite a while. Yeah. I mean, it's really been two yeah. campaigns. There was the first half, which was the conservatives establishing pretty well had free reign, right? They just took control of the message and weren't really all that challenged. 
And then after that, they got gummed up and it's been kind of a, and then it's just been a messy bar fight since then. So the liberals broke out the champagne last night and had a rally. <laughs> a lot of people on uh, Twitter are in high dudgeon about the fact that they jammed a lot of unmasked people oh my God. into a room and didn't space them um, and then brought old people in. Hazel McCallie and Jean Cretchen. Yeah, they, they looked, Hazel and, and uh, Cretchen looked like they were dragged in there and didn't want to be there. There were not two happier fucking people in the world yesterday than Hazel McCallion and John Cretchen. Like they were like, like they, they, they would have waded into the sea of like people that had COVID. Like they were back to relevance <laughs> like they had not seen in a long time. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Why would they have a rally? Why would, they, when they are running in the last week, when they are, running on what they're running on and trying to be the safe stewards of COVID, the responsible science-based managers of COVID. Why would they do that rally? Can I go? Can I go? Yeah, go. All yeah. right. Because of what we talked about just a couple of minutes ago and what we talked about yesterday, they did it because they needed an event that allowed Trudeau to correct, that allowed Trudeau to get on top of him. His, his performance. So if you take a look at that, we talked about it yesterday, the drive-in event, right? He was in his element. He was loving it. He was drawing energy from the crowd and he was looking like a hundred dollar bill. They gave him that rally because in between he did that BC Global interview and he looked like shit. He looked chippy, angry, frustrated, irritated. He looked like he did the English language leaders debate. And I think that they, and we talked about this before the campaign, I think this liberal campaign and this liberal leader, this prime minister, Justin Trudeau likes the crowd. He likes the rally. That's his element. That's where he performs at his maximum. And they gave that to him. And then they just said, go fly a kite. It was a room of a thousand. We only put 400 in. And you know what? Hazel's indestructible, obviously. If she was going to die, she would have died a long time ago. You couldn't hit her. You couldn't bring her down with an arrow. So forget it. And um, I think you know, I, I think that makes sense. I, I, I know we talked about this before. I like the rallies and, uh, you know, you got to try to be a bit responsible in it, but I like the rallies. I feel like it gives you good images and I think it makes the leader feel, feel good and present well. Well, and I, I listen, I agree with you, Scott. And I also think it, it gives a, a bit of a, a wind in the sails for your volunteers and your candidates that uh, are watching that. It looked like a good event. It wasn't like five people sitting in a ballroom uh, watch like, you know, six feet apart. It's it's kind of it's the whether people want to admit it or not, they're done with the theater of COVID. So even the liberals are so they can they can say certain things uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the campaign. But at the end of the day, even liberal supporters, liberal candidates, the prime minister, the leaders who are they're done with the theater of COVID. Uh, they want to get things back to uh, they want to get things back to normal. They have no problem and should have no problem in the magic surreal pocket universe that is a campaign standing on a stage in front of 400 people tightly packed saying and this fucker won't support vaccine passports and i'm all for it <laughs> cognitive dissonance kiss my ass go for it you have to do what looks good feels good and is good for the campaign in these final days <laughs> since confederation owning a home has been part of the canadian dream for most people that dream is much more than just a monthly mortgage payment. A home is where we create our fondest memories and where we can truly be ourselves. For too many, especially young adults, that reality is out of reach and it's getting worse. The good news is our original sponsor, the Ontario Real Estate Association, or RIA for short, has a plan to save the Canadian dream of home ownership. It includes lowering costs for first-time buyers, ending money laundering in the real estate market, and cutting years of red tape that is standing in the way of more affordable homes for families. The ARIA plan will lay the foundation for a future where all people can find a place to call home. When we support the dreams of all of us who want to own a home, we're building healthier families, stronger communities, and a safer, more secure future for all. Read their plan at aria.com backslash affordable homes. Anybody watching these Rosie Barton interviews? With the leaders, I so I watched. I watched with with Aaron. I watched uh, last night with Singh, and I watched clips with Trudeau. Yeah, I've seen um, parts of all of them. Yeah, I haven't too. seen any of. I haven't seen all of any of them. I've seen parts of all of them. Um, she beat the fucking shit out of Singh last night. Yeah, she did. 
Yeah, and it got got a little bit of buzz. I mean, he had a good day with Animal Crossing. You know, him and Tom Nook went fishing. What, is that? what, what even is that? What a even is that? People are making fun animal, of it, and I don't know enough to get the joke. I only know it because of an eight-year-old who's obsessed with it. Eight, you know, Animal Crossing is essentially a video game. You acquire characters, all sorts of stuff. Sam and I built a, a cabin on Animal Crossing at great um, expenditure of my time and mental energy one day. Um, but there's a little character named Tom Nook, and, you know, so is it like is it is it if we go back and like to our age is it like the Sims like where you're you're building kind of like a little bit more character oriented than Sims you're, but you like, go back to my age it's fucking Lego well <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> we were playing with runes here in uh, Celtic land but you know I, I and I got I made fun of it this morning like early like five thirty in the morning and I've already been getting an onslaught of hate you know oh you're just old you don't get it you know and I'm like I don't know do you remember the time Joe Clark like you know, spent one of his final days in 1979, you know, at a Galaga marathon and everybody was like, yeah, he really gets the youth. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. I got TikTok. <laughs> Animal Crossing is just a glorified uh, video game. I don't understand what that, what that gets you. So anyway, I'm taking us off track. After Animal yeah, Crossing, he got beat up by his time. Hmm? Yeah. And, you know, I, I, so I don't think the questions are unfair in a way, because his platform is extraordinarily vague and he has given no, made no attempt to provide rationales about how he would accomplish his objectives in this campaign. So I thought the questions were fair, but when you set your, when you set up a format like that, you really have to feel, you really have to ensure that you treat everybody exactly the same way, don't you? I mean, I remember feeling in 19, in 2004, Scott, that Mansbridge had been extraordinarily tough on Paul and tougher on Paul than he'd been on anybody else um, in that election. And I felt aggrieved about it. Really? You felt that? Because that's not how we felt. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, there, there, that's a perfect encapsulation of the dilemma, by the way. Yes. But, yes. Yeah. Welcome to the bubble. Um, yeah. yeah. Look, I, I think <laughs> by and large, you know, Rosie busts in, interrupts, says you're wrong, um, does a little swagger. You know, she's got a lot of swagger, your questions. It's a lot of, uh-uh-uh, right? That's not what I asked you. I asked you this. Some people love that. Some people don't like it. It doesn't matter. Um, and sometimes it's going to cut deeper than it does with others. It just kind of goes in the rhythm of, you know, that's what you're in for. And if you're going to sit down for an hour and a half and do that or an hour and do that, your candidate has to be prepared for that. Your candidate has to be paired, prepared to defend their thesis. That's what you're going in for. This is a board. You're going in to defend your thesis. And I didn't, you know, I didn't think Singh was, uh, um, it kind of, to me, kind of captures a little bit of their campaign. They've got one gear. Their one gear is, I'm likable. I'll bring you poutine. Everybody likes a personal appeal, but there's no second gear. And they've got four days to figure out how to defend their fortress from the pincher that's coming from the liberals. And, um... I, I thought be, in some ways the lack of preparation for that interview is, is is another indication they may not be ready for the next four or five days either. And I know our NDP panel will hate that, but I haven't seen a second gear from these guys. Yeah, no, I don't disagree with that. But to be fair to them, Scott, in terms of Rosie, when has she ever fucking done an interview like that before? Like, like it, 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 that's normally not her style. It was like she channeled her energy from... Uh, from the from the debate, uh, the the English language debate, the only debate in Canadian history that's going to affect the outcome in Quebec. That's interesting. Um, um, so, so like, so if you're going in there and preparing, because they all I think taped around the same time, like it's 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 not like Singh had a chance to like watch what you know Trudeau and and O'Toole was. I think they all taped around the same time. So so like you're looking at it, going like when why would you expect this? Why would you expect th this to be kind of the 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 format or or what have you? Well, that's interesting because I have a different take on that, to be honest. That is what I, I grant you that it came off as tougher on Singh than she was no, it was no picnic on, on Trudeau. And she also challenged O'Toole, but I grant you that she came off as harder on Singh. But I, I do think that's, that's what you get out of her. She will, she, she will put the stop sign up and she will interrupt and she will challenge you on it. And that's her whole thing. And lots and lots of people respond to that. So I think I don't know. I, I I would ever I would have prepared for that. I would have said this isn't this isn't seven minutes on uh, you know Vancouver radio, and then we're doing seven minutes on Calgary radio. This is going to be a grilling for an hour. Uh, 
I mean, it wasn't. All right, guys. It was an English language yeah. leaders debate moderator, which blew up the province of Quebec and altered the course of history and the election. <laughs> for fuck's sake. <laughs> Which I think now is firmly well, established but, as a fact. So I hope yeah. somebody somewhere reflects on that. But anyway. How about our curses to end the show? Time has flown. Scott, you get to go first. I've gone first the last two days. Not that I'm keeping track. Well, I, I kind of scoop myself. My curse is actually at the NDP campaign. And it's this. You know what's coming. And you've known it. I've heard people, smart people like Sally Hauser, talking about this since before the campaign began. You know that if it was a tight election, that the liberals are coming to try to collapse your vote, particularly in Ontario. They'd love to do it in BC also, but you know particularly it's coming in, in Ontario. It might be, given the numbers we see, there may be a whiff that it's already started. Um, and the NDP have got to find a second, uh, a second gear. I listened to that interview. I like all those people on the panel that you have, David. They're all great, smart, fun people. But I don't hear a second gear. I hear the alchemy that I talked about before, right? His personal appeal will allow him to withstand the traditional liberal pinch, and he will somehow translate that into votes that he hasn't held so far. I don't think they've moved an inch during this campaign. And I, uh, I think they need a second gear. They need a rationale to say, do not take our votes away. Do not abandon us. And I haven't seen it yet. And they better find it in the next four days or their pocket is going to get picked. Yeah, I agree. My my curse would be to the conservatives. Could you just guys just shut the fuck up for the for the next five days? Like, like, could, could we just stop making up policy? Can we just stop saying what you think people want to say uh, or want to hear? Um, can you just... Um, I, you know, let local campaigns, uh, do their thing. Uh, Aaron can crisscross across the country in his fucking vans running shoes and, and, uh, and what have you, but just let's stop talking about like explaining ourselves six months after you introduced a carbon tax, um, explaining now how it's going to be implemented in the provinces, just be quiet for the rest of the campaign and let people do their thing. In the, province, in the province of British Columbia, if you open a second personal carbon savings account, you actually get a line of credit also in order to build a bicycle. So um, it's exciting to vote conservative. Every day. It's I, think Jenny, I think Jenny's about one day from advocating the uh, 2018 Kathleen Wynne strategy. <laughs> we, can't, we can't talk about it anymore, David. People disapprove of us. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 curse goes out to the liberal campaign tone tone and tone if people sense that you are going to win a majority or that you might win a majority my my gut tells me they'll deny it to you sneak this one in under the radar look like you're fighting hard look like you're scrapping look like you think you're going to lose look like it's tight don't crack open any victory dances, don't have any stories emerge about who was the brains behind the comeback. None of that. None of that. Crawl in under the radar. And that's our show for today. Thank you all for listening. I'd like to thank our presenting sponsor, TELUS, and the Ontario Real Estate, Associ Real Estate Association for their support and help today. Yeah, I know my lips aren't working too well this morning. Um, <laughs> Thanks to Politico and Nick Taylor Vasey, and that's always a tough one. Uh, and to uh, Ecos and Frank Graves for their numbers. By the way, there's a special edition of the Hurley Burley coming out today with Dennis Matthews and David Rosenberg analyzing the latest round of advertising. It's going to be a great one. Look that up. And uh, we will see you back tomorrow morning on Curse of Politics. Thanks for listening.